Perius, the son of Ixium, wed Hippodami and invited those cloud-born beasts, the centaurs, to recline at tables carefully arranged and set into a grotto sheltered by high foliage. The highest-born Thessalians were present, and we ourselves, the palace hall rang out with mingled sounds of festive merriment. They had begun to sing the wedding hymn, and the torches were smoking up the atrium, and the young maiden, outstanding in her beauty, had just come in, surrounded by a crowd of matrons and newly married women. Eratus, the fiercest of the fierce centaurs, with the heart inflamed by wine, took fire at the entrance of the virgin, and lust was doubled by inebriation. The tables were all overthrown at once, and the marriage feast was turned into a rout, and the new bride was picked up by her hair and carried off. Eurytus seized Hippodame, and the others seized the women that they fancied, or those that they were able to abduct, and in no time at all, the scene resembled what happens when a city is despoiled. The hero fit his actions to his words, driving the centaurs off and rescuing the maiden from their hands. Aware that such actions were indefensible with words, the centaur rushed at Theseus and struck his face and selfless breast, breath excuse me, with shameless hands. It happened that an antique mixing bowl engraved elaborately stood nearby. Though it was large, Theseus was larger. And so the great-hearted hero hoisted it and smashed it into his opponent's face. Bits of brain, gobbets of gore, and wine came vomiting forth from mouth and wound alike as he crashed backwards on the blood-soaked stands. Maybe it's an afternoon story. Um, his death enraged the bimanous quadrupeds, who all together cried at once, To arms! To arms! Wine gave them courage, and they fought at first with flying cups and jars, and with curved basins. The implements once found at dinner parties were now appropriate to war and slaughter. I guess this is the original barroom brawl. Amicus first dared to rob the sanctuary of its gifts, and snatching up a chandelier replete with votive lamps all lit up for the wedding, he lifted it up high above his head as though he were about to sacrifice a spotless bull and brought it crashing down on Keladon the Lapid, rendering the wedding guest unrecognizable in a welter of crushed bone. The eyes leapt forth from the disfigured pudding of his face, and his nose was driven back into his palate. You will not get away with that if I can find a weapon. <laughs> and he found one in the antlers of a stag, a votive offering fixed to a pine. He plunged the horns into Grinius' eyes and gouged them out. One to an antler hung, and the other dribbled down his beard and hung suspended in a mass of plodding gore. <laughs> but look, right from the middle of the altar, Gratus snatches up a blazing brand of plum tree wood, and whirling it around in his right hand, he smashes it in the head of Charoxus, all covered in blonde hair, which catches fire instantly and burns as swiftly as a grain field in a drought. And the boiling blood that issues from that wound gives out a terrifying hissing noise, just as a heated bar of iron does when the blacksmith removes it from the furnace with his pinchers and then thrusts it in a vat of water where it hisses and sizzles. Distressed, he brushed the leaping flames away from his unkempt hair and tore a threshold stone out of the earth and hoisted that great weight, more suitable for oxen, on his shoulders, too heavy to be launched against a foe. It fell. He dropped it on his friend, Prometheus, who happened to be standing there and crushed him. Oh, Rhodus could not keep from chortling. Oh, bravely done, he said. And may the rest of your side do as well as you, I pray. He charged again, still wielding his charred brand, and struck at him repeatedly until his skull was broken into many pieces, which sank into the jelly of his brain. Pieces of bone? 